All right, let's look at the 6.4, 6.5 practice. Well, we have a quadrilateral RSTU, and it's telling us that this is a rectangle. Okay, RSTU. We need to follow the find the following measures and identify the property we used. So let's look at this. So RZ is 3x plus 8RZ. Well, that's this section right here. And then ZS is 6x minus 28. ZS is right here. Well, in a rectangle, we have congruent diagonals. That's the, that's the diagonal test. And that's how we determine whether a parallelogram is a rectangle or not. So the other property we have to remember is that not only is RT congruent to US, or SU I should probably say, These diagonals, they, they bisect each other, so we have congruent parts. So that's our strategy, because RZ is congruent to ZS. So now we substitute in what we know. Well, RZ is 3x plus 8, and so that's equal to 6x minus 28. So we solve, we're solving now for x. I'm going to add 28 to both sides. And so I get 3x plus 36 equals 6x. I'm going to subtract 3x, subtract 3x, and I get 36 equals 3x. Divide by 3, divide by 3, we get x equals 12. Well, that's what x is. We want to find UZ. We want to find UZ. So if X is 12, we just plug it in to this part. This is UZ right here. And UZ is another one of those legs. This is also congruent. All these diagonals are congruent, and because they bisect each other, they form small little parts. So, if x is 12, we just got to plug it into one of these. It, it doesn't matter which one. We can plug it into to RZ, or we can plug it into ZS. We're going to get the same answer. So, 3 times 12 plus 8. So, this is going to be 36. 36 plus 8 is, is 44. That is what UZ is equal to. That's what all these little legs are equal to. Right, let's go to the next one. RT is equal to 112. Well, RT is this hole. Again, if this is a rectangle, these diagonals, they bisect each other. They bisect each other. So these are congruent sides, and they complete two halves of the whole. So if RT, the whole is 112, which it stated is, RT is equal to 112. Well, ZT, ZT is going to be half of RT. So just substitute in what you got. <clears throat> so half of 112 is going to be 56. That's what ZT is. Next one. We have the measure of angle SUT. SUT is that one right there. That angle measure right there is telling us that this is 3x plus 6. And then they're asking. That RUS, angle RUS, RUS, 
at that angle right there, that that is 5x minus 4. They're asking us to find the measure of the angle S U T, so half that angle. They're asking us to find this angle measure, S U T. Well, what do we got here? We have a rectangle. <clears throat> and if you remember, <clears throat> a, a rectangle, the definition of a rectangle is that we have four 90 degree angles. Four right angles there. What's the measure of a right angle? Well, it's 90 degrees. So these added together, these angle measures add up to 90. So that's your strategy here. So 5x minus 4 plus 3x plus 6 equals 90 degrees. So when we combine like terms, 3x plus 5x is 8x. Negative 4 plus 6 is going to be a plus 2. Now we're solving for x, solve for x, subtract 2, we get 8x is equal to 88. When we divide by 8, divide by 8, we get x equals 11, right? So now we plug this in to just one of the, the expressions for angle SUT, and this becomes 3 times 11 plus 6. So 3 times 11 is 33, plus 6 is 39. That's your answer. If the measure of RSU is x plus 41, R, S, U, is that angle right there and they're telling me that that is x plus 41 and then the measure of angle TUS TUS that angle that is 3x plus 9 you see and they want us to find the measure of RSU so what we have here is this diagonal this SU diagonal. This splits that rectangle up into two congruent triangles. Now if you see, I'm going to highlight this, this triangle here is congruent to this other triangle, RSU. Okay, now if we, if we rotate it, these two angles are corresponding angles. And corresponding angles are congruent, okay? This RSU angle is congruent to, to TUS. So that's our strategy. If we have two congruent angles, let's write out our strategy here. If the measure of angle RSU is congruent to the measure of angle TUS, well, that's going to be our strategy. They're congruent angles. They're the, they're the same measure. So plug in and substitute what you know. Substitute in the algebra. So x plus 41 is going to equal 3x plus 9. So I'm going to subtract 9, subtract 9, and I get x plus 32 equals 3x. So I'm going to subtract x, subtract x, and I get 32 is equal to 2x divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get x equals 16. Now that's not my solution because I want to find that angle measure, RSU. So I plug it in to our equation here. Well, the measure of angle RSU is equal to x plus 41. Well, we just solved for x, so plug in 16 and you're going to get your answer. So 16 plus 41, that's 57. And that is your angle measure of, of angle RSU. All right, number five, quadrilateral DKLM. DKLM 
is a rhombus. Justify your answer with the property used. So if the measure of angle D ML D ML is right here is 82 degrees. Well, this is 82 degrees, that hole. Find the measure of D KM. D KM is this opposite angle here, right here. All right? <clears throat> well, in a rhombus, remember, opposite, well, in, even in a parallelogram, all opposite angles are congruent. So I know that this big angle is the same angle measure. This is also 82 degrees. And then in a rhombus, these diagonals, we know these diagonals, that they, <clears throat> they bisect those opposite congruent angles. So what happens is that <clears throat> that diagonal will cut the angle measure 82 in half. And so my measure of angle DKM is 41 degrees. All right, number six. DA is 4X. That's this right here. And they're telling us that is 4X. That little nub is 4X. And then it's telling us, it's giving us more information, AL is 5X minus 3. That little nub is 5X minus 3. It's asking us to find the length of DL. And look at DL. DL is the hole. DL is the hole here. Okay? <clears throat> so what we have here is our diagonals of a rhombus. They bisect each other. So this side is congruent to that side. And this nub is congruent to that nub. So we know, because it's a rhombus, that the diagonals bisect each other, so we know that these little nubs, these little parts, are equal to each other. So we're going to substitute in what we know. So dx is 4x, al is 5x minus 3. So I'm going to subtract 5x, subtract 5x, I get negative 1x equals negative 3. Now to solve for this, i got to divide by that coefficient, negative 1. So I get x equals 3. Well, that's what x is. They want us to find dl, the hole. They want us to find this hole. So you can either plug it into both parts, or you can double, double it in one of the parts, your choice. We should get the same answer. Oh, let's just do it. Let's do it to both. <clears throat> so plug it into to da. So DL is, notice that DL is going to be equal to DA plus AL, because those two parts, the part plus part equals whole. So we're going to plug in what they got. Well, DA is 4X. AL is 5X minus 3. So when I plug in 3, this is going to be 4 times 3 plus 5 times 3, minus 3. And so 4 times 3, that's 12. 5 minus 3, oh, I'm sorry, 5 times 3 minus 3. 15 minus 3, well, that's 12 also. <clears throat> so 12, time, 12 plus 12 is 24, and that is what DL is equal to. Next one. If dm is 5y plus 2, so dm is the side, and they're saying that that is 5y plus 2, 5y plus 2. And dk, dk is this top side right here. So dk is equal to 3y plus 6. <clears throat> well, these sides of a rhombus, are all congruent. They're all congruent. So that's your strategy. We know that DM is congruent to DK. Because <clears throat> all four sides of a rhombus 
are congruent. So plug in what you know. I know that dm is 5y plus 2. dk is 3y plus 6. So solve for y now. Subtract 3y from both sides. I get 2y plus 2 equals 6. Subtract the 2, subtract the 2. I get 2y equals 4. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Y is equal to 2. <clears throat> well, they want us to find KL. Well, KL is this opposite side. And they're, because they're congruent, we just plug it in to one of these equations. I'm going to plug it in to 5Y plus 2. So plug it in, 5 times 2 plus 2. Well, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So KL is equal to 12. <clears throat> Number 8, we have quadrilateral DKLM. Oh, this is not DKML. These are different. D. We gotta change. We gotta change some of these. All right. D K L M. This is my D up here. This is my K, and this is my L M. Okay. Sorry about that. So they want us to find the values of X and values of Y. Let's look at this. This is a parallelogram. Properties of parallelograms. We got two diagonals here. Now remember, in a parallelogram. These diagonals, they bisect each other. Remember when something bisects each other, they create equal halves. All right? They create equal halves. So these little nubs are equal to each other because these, these diagonals, they bisect each other. Well, that's your strategy. If you've got two parts that are equal and congruent to each other, that's what you're going to come up with your strategy for. So my first strategy is going to be 4x equals x plus 6. All right? And when we solve for x, we're going to subtract x from both sides. So I get 3x equals 6. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. I get x equals 2. The other strategy is going to be 5y minus 8 is equal to 3 y plus 1. <clears throat> so subtract 3y, subtract 3y, and I get 2y minus 8 equals 1. So add 8, add 8, and you get 2y is equal to 9. So now we've got to divide by 2, divide by 2, and we divide 9 by 2, that is 4.5. That's my answer. Number 9. Tell us that M and Q, P, Q, M and P, Q, that this is a square. Now we need to find the measure and justify our answer with the property used. So that's going to, what is the measure of angle A, P, Q? Well, A, P, Q is right here. It's this angle right in this corner here. Well, in a square, we have four 90-degree angles. All right? So we got four 90-degree angles here. We also, in a square, these diagonals, they bisect those angles. Okay? So if I bisect something that's 90 degrees, what happens? Well, I'm going to split it into half. And half of 90 degrees is 45 degrees. That is what the measure of angle A, P, Q is. Next one. Find the measure of M, N, P. Well, M, N, P is going to be that corner, 90 degrees. Find the measure of NAP. NAP is, is this one right here. That's my diagonal. NAP, let me do that different. 
and AP is going to be this diagonal right here. And it wants to find the value of x. Well, this, these diagonals, they are perpendicular lines in a square. And if you have perpendicular lines in a square, this is a 90 degree angle. This is a right angle. So the measure of angle NAP is 90. So that's your strategy. 90 degrees is going to be equal to this algebra, 9x minus 9. So I'm adding 9. I'm solving for x now. And I get 9x equals 99. I'm going to divide by 9, divide by 9, and I get x equals 11. Number 12. If PM is equal to 4x minus 12, well, PM is this diagonal. PM is this diagonal here. And they're saying that that is 4x minus 12. So that's 4x minus 12, that little, that hole. Then NQ is 2x plus 12. Well, that's the other diagonal. In a parallelogram, these diagonals are congruent. They're the same length. That's your strategy here. <clears throat> so plug in, substitute in what you know, substitute in the algebra. So now we're solving for x. So subtract 2x from both sides. And you get 2x minus 12 equals 10. I'm running out of room here. Now we got to add 12. We add 12, and I get 2x equals 22. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Oh my, look at that. We get x is 11 again. We get the same answer. Next one. It says here to determine whether each quadrilateral is a parallelogram a rectangle, rhombus, or square. And we need to justify our answer. So number 13, what do we have here? We've got diagonals that bisect each other. We've got diagonals that bisect each other. Well, that is a property in parallelograms. Now, in a rectangle, these diagonals are congruent. But you see that these are not congruent, so this is not a rectangle. And in a rhombus, these diagonals have to be a 90 degree angle. And the same thing in a square. So they do not create perpendicular lines there. So this first one is a parallelogram. Because The diagonals bisect each other. All right, number 14. Number 14. Well, this one, we've got diagonals that bisect each other again. But look, we've got a 90-degree angle there. We've got a 90-degree angle. So these are perpendicular lines. But do you see that the diagonals are not congruent? In a square, the diagonals are congruent. So this... This one is a rhombus because we have diagonals that are perpendicular lines. Number 15. Number 15, we've got opposite congruent angles. Opposite congruent angles. And so this is a property of parallelogram that we have opposite congruent angles. And that's all the information we know. That's all the information we know. So this one is a parallelogram. Number 16. Well, we have all of these are congruent angles. These are all congruent angles. Each one of these angles is equal to each other. Well, we got a foregone here, or we have a quadrilateral. 
And what is the total angle measure in a quadrilateral? Well, it's got four sides, so plug in four into our equation. Remember, our equation for figuring total angle measure is 180 times n minus 2. So when I plug this in, 4 subtract 2 is 2. So this becomes 180 times 2. So this is going to be 360. And if I have four congruent angles, I divide by four. That means that each one of these angles is 90 degrees. So we have right angles in each of these corners. Well, we know that a square and a rectangle both have 90 degree angles. But by definition, a rectangle has four right angles. Remember, a square is a rectangle. So that is what 16 is.